Hi, everybody. I'm Scott. And uh, for your amusement and, well, education, I guess, I bought seven different brands of AA lithium ion rechargeable batteries. And here they are. We have Gigastone, Bonai, or Bonet, Deli Pow, Amp Torrent, Juji, or Juggy, Tenovolts, and EBLs. And let me uh, spoil it for you in that the Gigastones appear to have the highest capacity of all of these. That's right, Gigastone. I've never heard of them either. And uh, generally the best charger, I think, because it has a USB-C connection, whereas the rest of these are either micro USB or in the case of the Jujis, they plug directly into a USB socket, which I actually don't like because that can put extra like weight on your USB uh, port. And uh, yeah, I just don't like this form factor. It is very compact. I'll give it that. And, but on the other hand, it only charges two batteries at a time. And so if you want to charge four, you need two USB sockets. Which isn't necessarily an issue. I just figured I'd bring that up and, uh, well, point it out. The rest of these are pretty much the same. The EBLs, of course, I got an 8-pack. You can also get it in a 4-pack. This just happened to be a bit uh, cheaper to get it in this form factor. And there were 10 volts, amp torrents, Delhi, POWs, Bonais, and Gigastones were all 4. And the chargers are all very similar. And I'll get into the differences between them in a few minutes. And since I'm in spoiler territory, the... Uh, Jujis or Juggies, um, they were the worst in my experiments. Oh, hey, it's me here with another interjection or tangent or whatever you want to call this. Um, this video is not sponsored by anyone. Well, uh, okay, it's sponsored by me and my wallet. Uh, my wallet was the sponsor and it paid for all of these batteries. So I have no horse in this race. I could care less which ones were the best ones. I just wanted to find out from my own curiosity and hopefully to satisfy yours. So. I bought them not knowing or caring which would be the best. And in fact, I, I thought the Gigastones would be poor performers based on their shitty packaging. And uh, just the fact they're called Gigastone. It's a weird brand name. Although I suppose no weirder than the rest. I mean, Del Pow, Deli Pow. I don't know. Anyway, a lot of weird names. Now, I can't guarantee that my experiments are like, you know, laboratory grade type testing. I test them to the best of my ability, and what I did is basically I put them onto a test rig similar to ones I've used before, only with a milliamp hour meter instead of just trying to gauge the voltage as it drops down. And so let me show you that milliamp hour meter right now. The milliamp hour meters I used to test all these batteries were relatively cheap Banggood $5 specials. In the box is the little exposed circuit board of the tester, which included brass standoffs. A nice touch, though I ended up ditching them for mounting onto plywood. Also included were a pair of 7.5 ohm ceramic high current resistors. Because I wanted to load down the cells at about half an amp, I replaced the included resistors with 12 ohm units that have an even higher power rating. Also ordered cheap from Banggood. The connections on this board are pretty simple. The outer two terminals are where the resistor connects, polarity being unimportant of course, and the inner terminals are where the batteries under test connect, with the polarity being marked on the back of the board. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to hook this one up and populate its battery pack with some random alkaline AA's. The final connection is the USB power input that actually drives the device. That's an improvement over the voltmeters I used in my last experiment with alkaline AAA's, which drive power from whatever was under test. The operation is pretty straightforward. Immediately upon power up, it shows the battery voltage. Using the plus and minus buttons, you can set the end of discharge voltage, the point at which the device stops taking measurements and displays the total milliamp hours. Here I've it set to 4 volts, though I used 3 volts during the actual tests, and once the OK button is pressed, it begins drawing current using the resistor and measures the total current draw over time. It cycles through displaying milliamp hours, amperage, and voltage. I used 5 of these when discharging the batteries and tested all 5 against this Fluke multimeter. They were all accurate within about a percent as measured at the resistor. The voltage as measured at the battery pack is a little higher. Because these battery packs have extremely thin wires, there's a decent amount of voltage drop across them, and with that, some extraneous current draw. That might skew the test results a tiny bit in absolute terms, but it shouldn't affect the relative performance of all the batteries I've tested here. Well, thank you for that voiceover narration, me. At the very end of the video, I'll show a time-lapse of the construction of this rig that I used to... Well, I call it a rig, it's really just all this crap 
screwed to a piece of plywood, but I used this to test all the batteries in multiple stages. And just for fun, I also tested some alkaline batteries and nickel metal hydride batteries just to see how they would stack up to these lithium ion ones. And the results from the testing of the milliamp hours is available on this spreadsheet. In addition to some other statistics and information about these batteries, there'll be a link to this on my website at s.co.tt slash double a lithium. And you can see here, I recommended the Gigastones because they had the overall highest milliamp hour average um, across a couple of tests, followed fairly closely by the Amp Torrents, the EBLs, and the Bonais. The Jugies or Jugies lagged behind a little bit, as did the Delhi Pow. The real reason I think the Jugies are the worst is because they happen to have the lowest mid discharge voltage. Like as the test was going on, these are all supposed to be constant 1.5 volt batteries like they should always give 1.5 volts i mean up to a point i'll show you when a ridiculous load is applied to them but they're supposed to deliver a constant 1.5 volts no matter what their state of charge is because a lithium ion battery has a nominal voltage of 4.2 volts and so as that voltage goes down it's still not going to go below 1.5 under normal conditions it really shouldn't anyway and so it should be able to, via a step-down converter, provide 1.5 volts pretty much regardless of the state of charge of the lithium-ion battery, or of the lithium-ion cell within the uh, physical unit. And the Jujis were absolutely the worst as far as the voltage about midway through the discharge test. So they were only about half discharged, but they were down to 0.92 volts, whereas the rest of the battery stayed around 1.4 volts-ish. And I highlighted in green, these uh, were all in the same range. And so they all scored highly there. And so I noted that they all advertised the constant voltage uh, output of 1.5, but the Jujis were horrible. The EBLs were mediocre, as were the Bonais. The spreadsheet also shows charging time and charging milliamps. And here, it didn't even occur to me to test this until just this very last minute but I tested the voltage at a certain current draw for full cells. So these are fully charged cells, and at one amp, you can see the voltage is nowhere near 1.5 volts, and it drops off severely in some cases after that. Um, and three amps is kind of just a ridiculous amount for these batteries, but uh, I figured I'd test it anyway. So with some of them, you could safely go up to about 2.5 amps and still get a reasonably usable voltage out of them. Um, and all of them will perform somewhat reasonably at 2 amps. In fact, here is the setup I use for that. It's nothing fancy. I have a battery pack to which I attached a couple of much thicker cables so that we'd get less current, uh, less voltage drop across the cables under high current draw. And I populated this battery pack with each of these cells one by one. Well, four by four, I should say. And uh, I cranked it up to the appropriate amperage. And let me show you that now. I'm using the... 10 volts here because interestingly although they had the absolute lowest overall capacity they actually held their voltage the best at various current draws so for example i would crank the current up to let's say one amp and just observe the voltage that it dropped to at that current draw and then i would gradually crank it up to 1.2 amps 1.5 amps 1.7 to and anyway you get the idea and then these will actually provide some voltage at 3 amps although you can see it's dropping off steadily when I, and these are actually getting quite warm right away so uh, turn that off I can actually feel the terminals under here getting well a bit hot so definitely not meant to provide 3 amps of current but uh, that was the extreme of the test, just to see if they would uh, survive that current draw and provide any sort of useful voltage. I figure some of you might be curious as to how these were packaged, so I did do an unboxing, and here we go. The award for nicest packaging goes to these uh, batteries. Uh, to be honest, I have no idea how to pronounce the name. Probably Juji, but maybe Juggy. I suppose if you're a Juggalo, these are my top recommendation. Otherwise, they suck. They come in this nice plastic display case and are neatly placed into foam inserts like a precious scientific device into a pelican case. Very nice, but in this situation quite pointless. Also, hugely wasteful if you consider the size of the contents. 
One thing I noticed immediately about the little charging unit was that aside from being a direct USB plug-in device, the back end of it was made of metal. That seemed like an odd design choice, so I wanted to test if it was connected to anything electrically, like one of the charge terminals, for example. Fortunately, it wasn't one of the charge terminals, but oddly it is connected to the USB shield. I guess for a maximum possibility of static discharge? Like most of the rest of these batteries, the amp torrents came in a generic box, tucked into the charger for maximum packaging efficiency. They're shrink-wrapped, which isn't a, uh, a struggle at all to open. The charger has a micro USB input, which as you'll see is a recurring theme here. I totally missed it at first, but tucked into a side compartment in that box is a short USB cable, less than a meter long. The charger, like most here, also has contacts for AAA batteries. I'm going to quickly zoom in on the specs and or manuals of these chargers really briefly. I figure if you're interested in the details, you can pause the old YouTube. This was actually the second package of Bonai's... Bon... Bonais? That I received from Amazon, because the first package I received was soaked in what smelled like lithium battery electrolyte. I had considered that to be a hazardous material, but I guess Amazon not so much, because they told me to send it back as is. So I did, but I stuck a warning label in the box for the hapless warehouse workers. If they even open it. Amazon has a thing for just chucking some returns into landfills, apparently. Anywho, the Bonai charger has one of the better looks and feels of all of these. The plastic doesn't feel cheap, and it has individual LEDs for each charge position. It also has a micro USB input, and the batteries come in a nice reusable container. I was sort of surprised when I opened the box of EBLs. Not by the USB cable nor the specs, but by the fact that the charger looked pretty much identical to the Bonai one. Okay, so this one is black and holds 8 batteries instead of 4, but otherwise it looks like it came from the same factory. The batteries also come in the same little organizers as the Bonai's, but the EBLs have some kind of authenticity sticker on them, which I guess means the Bonai's are just a ripoff? I'm kidding, they're more likely from the same white label supplier. The 10 volts are definitely from a different manufacturer, or at least product line coming with an extremely short, flat USB-A to micro-USB cable and a lid for the charger that was difficult for me to open, for some reason. The batteries are again efficiently packed into the charger, with a small strip of plastic preventing them from making electrical contact. The charger also has positions for AAA batteries. So that was it for the original test group, but then Amazon recommended a couple of additional brands, and I had to pick them up to make this comparison more complete. This Delhi POW charger is the cheapest feeling of the bunch, and one of the most cheaply packaged, but it does have individual charge LEDs and medium-sized USB cable, which are both positives in its favor. Um, not so sure about number 10 there, guys. Are you sure lithium batteries are eco-friendly and non-toxic? It comes with a simple piece of cardboard to isolate the batteries. Its charging cable is about average length for most of these chargers, at about a meter, give or take. One feature I kind of liked is that there's a hole in the back of the charger through which you can push out the batteries because they're pretty recessed and hard to grip from the front when the charger is fully populated. Now I move on to the Gigastones, my overall favorites. And these are an excellent study in why you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. This comes in the nastiest, simplest, yet easy to open, packaging out of the lot, but the batteries offered the highest capacity. The Jujis, with inarguably the fanciest and most expensive packaging, fared the worst in testing. The Gigastones also have the best written and most robust manual, with a bunch of nice features included. Feel free to pause the video as it scrolls past to check it out in more detail. This charger, as with all but the Juggies, has positions for AAA batteries as well, and unlike the rest, uses a USB-C charge cable. Since everything nowadays is moving to USB-C, I think this is the most future-proof and compatible option. Both for this spreadsheet and to get an idea of actual charge time, I wanted to get a reading of the amperage draw for each of the sets of batteries in their chargers. To do that, I used this little Klein Tools ET920 meter. It measures the same sorts of things as most meters of this type, like amperage, aggregate milliamp hours and watt hours, as well as total measurement time and resistance. I started with the amp torrents, and there was nothing interesting there, with the current draw holding steady at about 2.3 amps. The Bonai or Bonai cells were a completely different story. These were the slowest charging of the bunch, well, these and the EBLs, and it's no wonder. The current is all over the place. It seems to oscillate between taking no power at all up to a mere 0.9 amps. I didn't monitor any of these batteries for a full charge cycle, as that would have taken over 7.5 hours just for the Bonais, 
but I did keep an eye on these for about 20 minutes, and the current draw was all over the shop the entire time. By the way, the thing I like about this particular meter is that it has power in cables as opposed to a rigid USB connector, and supports both USB-A and USB-C connections without adapters. As you'll see here, the EBL unit was much the same story as the Bonai charger. It goes through a brief startup process where the LEDs blink green before switching over to red, at which point half of them light followed by the rest. Then current draw peaked at about 1.85 amps, double that of the Bonai, which makes sense as it holds double the cells. I went on to test the remaining batteries as you see here, with the 10 volts drawing about 2 amps steadily. One thing I found odd about the 10 volts is that they didn't seem to have a per charge indicator, but that's only because the lights in my little studio were so bright. I still had my trusty GoPro out from the discharge tests, and here you can see that the 10 volts do indeed have charge indicators built into each cell. At first I thought the Bonai's had no such charging indicators, same with the EBL's, because of course they have their charge indicators in the charging units themselves. It wasn't until I went to edit this video that I noticed the faint glow emanating from them. I then took a very careful look at the EBL's, and they also have little white LEDs on board. They're almost impossible to see though, because like the Bonai's, they're covered in the decorative shrink wrap, only in red. The amp torrents look extremely similar to the 10 volt cells, but they flash while charging as opposed to lighting steadily. The Juji cells also have on battery charging indicators with a slightly faster flash pattern. Their little charger modules also have a green LED indicator on the bottom to show the charger itself has power. I decided to whip out the old thermal imaging camera for the first group of batteries because the Juji's felt a little warmer than the rest. This is a Unity UTI 260B. Uh, maybe don't name your models starting with UTI, but uh, whatever. Which, in my experience, has about the same accuracy and feature set as my smaller FLIR unit, but with a larger screen, higher resolution, and lower price. Now, this isn't a paid recommendation by any means, but based on the past couple months of use, I recommend it. Predictably, the Bonai and EBL chargers were practically stone cold due to their low and intermittent charge current. The Jujis were getting a little warm at about 44 degrees C, or 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes sense given the charger's compact size and much higher current at about 500 milliamps per cell. The 10 volts were about the same, but the amp torrents were quite a bit cooler despite both also charging at about 500 milliamps per cell. Well, I hope that answered any questions you might have had about any of these batteries. Just for completeness, like I said, the Gigastones seem to have the highest overall capacity. The 10 volts, the 10 volts held their voltage the best uh, under load, and the Jujis or Juggies were, well, pretty bad as far as holding their voltage and had a mediocre overall capacity. If you're curious about uh, what these batteries look like on the inside and how they work, one of my favorite YouTubers, BigClive.com, did a teardown of the Juggies or Jujis, whatever the hell they're called, and I definitely recommend giving that a watch. You could just search for this video title here, Juggy Battery Teardown Full Size Video from BigClive.com. Thanks for watching. I've been Scott, and again, for more information and the spreadsheet and all that other crap, check out my website at s.co.tt slash double A lithium. And I'll see you for the next video, I suppose. And if you like the video, like it. If you subscribed it, subscribe it. Thanks. So many fucking batteries. What the hell do I spend my money on? <sighs> EBL is the only one I've heard of before this, because they also make nickel metal hydride cells, and I've tested those before in a different video, which you can also check out. Um, and I also tested recently, not that recently, but I tested AAA alkaline batteries, and weirdly, again, found a off-brand all max that happened to be the best that also was not sponsored but uh i tested their batteries during this test uh, they were one of the alkalines that i tested just for fun and they actually ended up performing the best out of that group so uh go figure like i said you can't always judge a book by its cover unless the cover tells you what the book is about and it's about something shitty it's not really a good analogy sometimes you can judge a book by its cover like if the book is called Strong Pornography for the Beginner, um, it might not be for you. Or maybe it is for you. Hard to tell. But you'd know it right away, wouldn't you?
I don't know. I hope that's good enough.